So I've done a few videos on the planar tracker, but for some reason, it's just hard to wrap your mind around. So this video is the very simplest, basic explanation I could possibly give for how to use a planar tracker inside of Fusion. So I have a shot here of these mountains, and let's say I want to make this sky a little bit more interesting. This is the perfect situation to use a planar tracker for, because if I were to put some clouds up here in the sky and I didn't track this, those clouds wouldn't be moving along with this moving shot, and it would be a dead giveaway that it's a visual effect. So what a planar tracker does is it tracks a bunch of points in whatever area we want for our image, and it lets us kind of stick things to it. So down here in my node flow, I have my media in and my media out. I have nothing else going on yet on this shot. Again, if I were to put anything here in the sky, let's just get some text. Now I were to put this text right here. It does not look like it is actually in the sky because it's not moving with our background. So the first thing we'll do is figure out exactly kind of where we want whatever element we're going to add to our shot to be. And if this is going to be clouds, then the clouds would be kind of up here in the sky. Let's just put the text here to represent our clouds, make it a little bigger. Maybe we'll say clouds go here. I'll go ahead and turn off our merge for that text. And let's make a planar tracker right after our original footage here, our media in. I can hit shift space bar. That'll bring up our select tool palette and I'll type PLA. That'll bring up our planar tracker. I'll hit enter. And now we have a planar tracker node attached after our media in. So our media in is running through this planar tracker. If I select this, then I have all these different options here in the inspector. We'll get to those in a second, but first what I wanna do is select a part of the image that is gonna move the exact same way as the area of the image that I want to kind of stick things to. Now, we're gonna have this text up in the sky, but I don't wanna select the sky because there's nothing really to track in the sky. It's kind of just this blue. If we had a bunch of clouds, we might be able to track those, but you know, <laughs> the problem is we don't have clouds. So oftentimes for a sky replacement, you can select and track the farthest objects from the camera, the ones that are closest to the horizon. So that's going to be these mountains right here. And with the planar tracker selected, I'm just going to click and drag and make a shape just on the top edge of these mountains here something like this. And I wanna make sure that whatever I select, those all move kind of all together, right? So there isn't a lot of difference over time on how those move. It might even be a good idea to just select this little part right here because this mountain does move a little bit different. There's a little bit of parallax there. And this is the area that I wanna track. It's also a good idea to make this selection on a frame that is similar to the rest of the shot. This one isn't gonna matter a whole lot, but it's generally a good idea if you have a you know left to right motion to just kind of start in the middle of the shot, something like that. So again, I'll reset this and just select the upper part of my mountains right here. Now I'm not selecting the lower part because there is some parallax happening there. We have these kind of foreground elements moving and I don't want that to throw off the track. I just want to select this top ridge here. In fact, I'll even exclude a little bit more of this just to make sure that we're just getting the motion that's actually happening and not getting thrown off by any of the parallax. Okay, something like that. And this is going to be our reference frame. Over here in the inspector, where it says reference time, I'll hit set. Operation mode will hit track. And here's where things get like, oh gosh, what, what do we do? What do we do with all this stuff? Well, generally you can leave this pretty much as default for most things. Tracker will leave at point. The one thing that I will change is this motion type. By default, it's on perspective, which is going to give you the most complicated track. And we often don't need a really complicated track for things. Perspective is great if it's something where you're tracking the side of a building and it's kind of moving in parallax, or if you are doing a corner pin where you're replacing a screen, something like that. But something like this, that's just kind of moving up and down and left and right, maybe rotating a little bit. We don't have to use a perspective track. We can go to the motion type and just click one of these upper ones. So probably translation and rotation would work just fine. You generally want to pick as close to the top as you can because it's less work to track and you're gonna get a better result if something's just moving up and down to just track it up and down, right? So let's just say translation rotation, everything else is just fine. And now I'm going to select track to end. What that's going to do is it's going to think about all of the frames from that first reference frame all the way to the end. And it's going to track the motion in a bunch of different points within this area. I'm going to do the same thing for the first half of the shot. I can go back to my first frame. I can also just hit go here on reference time. And then I'll track to the start of the shot like this. And now throughout the entire shot, we have tracker points. It was really easy to set up and this shape is stuck to that mountain. 
So now what do we do with it? Well, there are a few ways to use this planar tracker, but for something like this, and honestly, I think one of the most versatile and easy ways to use the planar tracker is to create a planar transform. Now, a planar transform is just a separate node that takes the movement from this track and it saves it out into another node that you can use to move other things. So with our planar tracker selected, I'll go here to where it says create planar transform and click it once and that will make a planar transform node. Now anything that we run through this node is going to basically stick to this mountain. It's going to have the same movement as this tracker does. So with our text, the clouds that go here, they're all slipping around. It looks terrible. If we run our text through this planar transform, which I can just drop this on here, drop the output onto our merge like this, put this in between the text and our merge. Now we have our clouds going here, but now they move along with the shot. And now, even though this is text and it's not really possible for text to just be floating there in the sky, it looks like it possibly could be floating there in the sky because the tracker works. And that's basically how it's done. Anything that you want to move along with the shot, you just run through a planar transform. So I have an example that I did earlier here that takes an actual sky and we merge this over a background to kind of resize this to 1920 by 1080. We do some color correction and we run that through a planar transform and that goes over our shot here. We also have a mask where we're kind of limiting it to not be over the mountains. And that mask is also running through the planar transform. We can see here, this is moving the mask along with our shot like that. Then we kind of crop the edges because it's widescreen. And now we have a pretty convincing sky replacement that's really, really easy just using a planar transform. And there's a lot more complicated things you could do with the planar tracker, but honestly, that's how I use it most of the time is you just track the area that you want to track. You use the simplest motion type you can get away with. You create a planar transform and you put that planar transform in between whatever you want to stick to the shot and the merge that's actually merging it over the shot. You can duplicate the same planar transform and put it in between masks. You can use the planar transform 50 times if you want to. In fact, after you're done tracking, you don't even need the planar tracker anymore. That's all done and all of the data and everything that you need is baked into this planar transform. So that's a really nice way to kind of save out your tracking data. And you can use this for sky replacements. You can replace a poster on the wall. You can replace a screen on a phone. You can use this tech technique to crop things. You can use this technique to clone things out. Very, very useful node, the planar tracker and the planar transform inside of Fusion. Hope that sheds some light on things. If you do want to learn a little bit more about compositing and visual effects in Fusion, we have a course for that. We have a beginner's course as well as an advanced course if you want to get a little bit more froggy, you know, uh, but that's available. There's a link in the description. And yeah, I hope that you like it and that you like this video a lot.